Hi, I'm Krista Commandor, and this is Becoming a Comedian, and you know where we are. You know where we are. Yeah. I love France. I'm a total Francophile. I love it because all the men call me madam. How can you not love that? And because when they meet you, they, they kiss you on the face. On the face. Which is actually called Le Bees. And the comedian Paul Taylor we're going to meet tomorrow became an internet sensation because of a clip that he did called Le Bees. So I'm so excited. I got like no sleep. But I'm here with an amazing comedian, Sarah Donnelly. And Sarah did a one-woman show called Help, I Married a Frenchman. Parisians have never been nicer to me than when I was carrying a French person inside of me. <laughs> it was amazing. I literally was just a vessel to bring another French person into the world. Like, that's it. So we hung out yesterday. She was, she was opening up for Paul, and we just had a really good talk. We had a lot of fun, and so I thought you would love to hear from her and hear about her becoming a comedian, working as a comedian in France. So here's Sarah. When I came here, I was like pretty down about my comedy though. So I was like, I don't care if I'm not doing comedy, whatever. Like, I'm gonna figure it out, I'm gonna write, and da da da. And um, luckily, there was one show in English every week hosted by Sebastian Marx on Friday nights. It's called the New York Comedy Night. It's still happening. We're gonna perform on it tomorrow. I was here for about a month before I decided to go get on stage. And then I was like, yes, like I have to be on stage. This is great. I had so much material about coming to another country and experiencing a bunch of stuff. Um, they say like, uh, I think Sebastian has a joke actually where he talks about when you arrive in France, like you, you're the same age as like how many years you've been in France and it's the same with like your French language. So it's kind of like a baby learning to walk again. And that's his joke and his premise, but it's so true. Like I had to learn how to walk again. I had to learn everything. I was learning French and like you feel like, a, you feel like a baby, you don't have to do anything. And then from there, I decided I wanted to start another show. And I paired up with a guy named Robert Hain, who runs uh, something called French Fried Comedy. And we started a show at the Pan Am Comedy Club. And then there were two shows a week in Paris. And then just snowballed from there, like other shows. And I started running a show with uh, a group of people called the Great British American Comedy Night. And then there was, well, first it was American Comedy Night. Then there was the British Comedy Night. And then there's been all these other shows. So it's been really cool, the evolution of the scene here because in the six years that I've been here, we went from having one show to, I think now, Paul has a show Monday night in English, there's a show Tuesday night, there's an open mic on Wednesday with another show now, a dirty show, and then um, there's also another show called Laugh, etc. There's like two shows on Friday, a show on Saturday, so like now there's one show in English almost every night of the week, which is pretty cool. So it's been cool to be part of that evolution. So it's been a lot easier to get stage time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the thing is, I was like, I wanted more stage time, which is why I started this show with Rob. And uh, yeah, now it's fun. Like, and the thing is, here the stage time is good. Like, people actually respect theater, and they respect what it means to be in the audience almost to a fault <laughs> because sometimes they don't laugh, but that means they like the show. Like, they don't get that like stand up is interactive, and like uh, we need their reaction. So sometimes like they do not laugh and you're like, oh fuck, they don't understand anything, they don't think it's funny, they don't get my references, and then after the show they'll be like, I really enjoyed that. That was really uh it was really cool, you're really funny. And you're like, What? <laughs> okay, and French people don't bullshit. It's not like American people. American people are like, oh my god, we loved it. No, they don't say if they didn't like it, they would just leave. They might even be like, We didn't like that. That wasn't good. So, um, it's cool because like we have audiences who are willing to pay, like not much, but they're willing to pay. They're attentive in a theater. It's not like, you know, in DC, I never got paid to do comedy. I think I got paid, the first time I did a show, I got paid like $10. I was like, oh my God, I got $10, it's amazing. And here, like, it's not like we get more than $10, but getting paid anything to do comedy, I think is pretty special and cool. Yeah, especially I know in the improv circles, especially in New York City, that's been a really, kind of cantankerous topic. Yeah. Of just people doing work and the venue making money yeah. and they're not getting any kind of compensation. Yeah, I mean, and that's definitely, that's a bit tricky here too because um, sometimes like the tradition in France is called like passing the hat and kind of like a street performer, like after you perform, you pass the hat around. But it's culturally known, so it's not strange to go to a show where there's not an entrance fee, but know that you're gonna pay afterwards in the chapeau, in the hat. Um, 
So that works really well when you perform in a French club and there's French people there because they, they put money in the hat because it's like this understood thing. But when you perform for a bunch of foreign people, there's like, oh, that's a tip jar or whatever. And then they'll put in like a euro and then you'll, then you won't make any money. Um, it's crazy. Like the difference between the hats when you've got like the expat mixed international crowd and a French crowd. Because I performed in the same venues with like the same amount of people and made like six times the money with the French audience, which is crazy. So um, that's pretty cool too. I've done one one woman show called Help I Married a Frenchman and I did it um, when I was pregnant. <laughs> and I'm working on a second show right now with my comedy wife, Amber Minogue, who is super, super funny. English comedian and um, we are hoping to launch it in January so we're working on a podcast a stage show and sketches as well so now do you I've noticed that um, I've seen a number of stand-ups that are in France and they have one person shows do you feel like it's easier to um, get your own show yeah do you yeah think there's a reason for that um yeah like one I think um, the w idea of like the one man show is what they call it, the one man show, which historically, I think in the US too, it's like a theatrical thing. And I think stand up in France has had a really interesting evolution because it's starting to be more like stand up, um, where people are on stage telling jokes about themselves. And there's not this like character veil or, you know, they have a microphone now. So, um, I think just the one-man show, there's thousands of one-man, one-woman shows in Paris that fit that description. And now more and more, there's starting to be more of these stand-up style shows. So I think it's not a foreign concept for them to have one person on stage for an hour. But I think because the community is small and we have these two really great venues that support comedy, um, they're willing to give you a chance. And if you can fill the room and get people in, then they're happy to have you do it again so that I definitely feel like it's easier there's less you know the US there's like so much competition there's just so much of everything there's so many amazing comedians and there's like thousands of equally shitty comedians so I think it's hard to have your to stand out and have a voice um, whereas here it's like we're such a niche group and uh, I think that definitely helps for sure so you find it's it's moving away from the storytelling aspect to just... Yeah, it's funny because I feel like they're mm. moving away from like the theatrical storytelling to get into the jokes. And I think in the U.S. people are moving back into the storytelling a little bit. Um, you know, so I think for me, like I, I don't see myself as a storytelling comedian, but that's what my friends tell me. Like, you have to tell stories. And I'm like, oh, okay. Like, uh... I think it means you're, I mean, to me, you're very conversational. Yeah, I mean, I definitely, I, I don't take that as a bad thing, but I'm just like, oh, I just feel like I write jokes. But I, I do, my style has always been, I talk about myself, my truth, like my life, um, you know, I guess we all do in some sense. But I, I guess, like, there's some comics who are more like, they want to be more stylized or they have more one-liners and like, I really, but like, I really draw on like my life and everything. I'm not necessarily thinking of like hypothetical situations. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe that's, I'm not, I don't know. Yeah, so. Awesome. Voila. Thank you so much, Sarah. That was really, really amazing to hear you talk about that. Thank you. Is there anything you'd like to tell American comedians? Um, anytime you wanna come to France, like let us know. We've had, we're very cool to let people share the stage and it's really fun and we've had some like super like professionally comedians and we get really excited and I'm trying to be cool. So I saw Michelle Buteau was in Paris and I love her. I'm such a fan and I messaged her on Instagram because I follow her on Instagram. So I messaged her and I was like, hey Michelle, I have a comedy show if you want to perform on it. And she was like, oh hey girl, I do. And I was like, oh my God. So. Uh, I was trying to be cool and be professional, but I'm like such a fangirl. So that's really fun. Um, and yeah, like there is a stage for you if you want to come by. Like we'd love to have you. It's, it's a good time and it's a good audience. Great. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you.